So it's the year 2020 and the 4K Fire Stick only has one and a half gigs of total RAM. Now, as you can imagine, that really isn't a lot. And once you do have a couple of applications running at the same time, then your device really does slow down. Now, one of the things you'll notice straight away is that your applications will start buffering because they really need that free RAM to cache the video that you're trying to play. And if they don't have that free RAM, you're going to get buffering so in this video today let me show you a couple of key things you can do on your device to really help reduce buffering so with all of that being said let's get started if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials the latest fire stick android and android tv tips and tricks then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell it's a small click from you but it makes a big difference to me thank you okay so what are the main factors that could potentially cause buffering on your device well, I'll say the top five in no particular order. Firstly, we have the internet bandwidth or your internet speed that's available to you. And the reason why I say available to you, like you could have, for example, a, a 70 meg internet connection, but because you have five other people in your house, that means you don't have 70 meg exclusive to you. You're actually sharing that amongst the other five people. So you really need to find out how much you have dedicated for your own device or your own fire stick or wherever you're trying to do the streaming from. Next up, we have distance to the server. So let's say, for example, I'm trying to stream something from a server based in the UK. Now, because I'm based in the UK, I will typically see better performance and less chance of buffering compared to me trying to connect to a server based in China or Russia or Australia. Because of that geographic distance, typically I will get better performance using a server local to me. Next up, we have the bandwidth of the server you're trying to connect to. So whichever server you're connecting to for your streaming, you have to see what the actual upload speed is because when you're serving content, when you're giving out content, it's not your download speed that makes a difference. It's your upload speed. Now, a server may have only a 100 meg connection or a gigabit connection, but if you have so many users all on that server, all trying to stream content, then that server's going to have a hard time. And because of that, you're more likely to get buffering. So bandwidth of the server and how many people are trying to consume that bandwidth is points three and four. And the last one we have is your device. Now, me trying to stream something, a high definition movie or something else on a first or second generation Fire Stick compared to an Nvidia Shield or something that's more powerful, naturally and invariably you're going to get much better performance and less chance of buffering using a more powerful device compared to a less powerful device like a second generation fire stick so they're probably the five main reasons that can actually cause buffering on your device now let's talk about what we can do to actually fix them so the first thing you want to do is go over to your notifications let's click on that and click on the context key which is the one with the three lines and select the option to manage let's click on that now now what's happening in the background is these applications, and we can see it's quite a few of them, are configured to send notifications to your device. Now these notifications do take up memory, they do take up processing time, and if you don't really care about what these applications are saying, then really you want to turn them off. So I would click on each of these applications and select off. So what this now means is if this application tried to send me a notification, because it's now configured to off, that's not going to happen anymore. So go through the list and all of the applications that you don't really care about in terms of notifications, switch all of them off. Now, for example, your VPN, whichever VPN you're using, I'm going to leave my one as on because I do want to know if the VPN has actually established a connection or disconnected. So I'll leave that one on, but pretty much everything else I'm going to turn off. Let's press back on that. Let's now go into applications. Let's go into the Silk browser, go into privacy, and where it says do not track, let's click on that and let's turn that to on, which means your device is not going to send personal data when you are browsing websites through the Silk browser. Let's back out of that, back again. Let's now go into Game Circle. Now, if you are playing games on your Amazon device and you want to synchronize your scores or your you know, settings and stuff, you can turn this on. But in my case, because I don't really do gaming, not through the official Amazon games anyway, I'll turn this off because again, the more processes you can turn off, the more free memory you'll have on your device. So let's click on that and let's turn that to off. Let's back again. Let's now go to Amazon Photos. Again, because I'm not using Amazon Photos, I'm gonna turn both these to off. And we can see that's now set to disabled. So again, the more things we can turn off, the more free memory we'll have on our Fire Stick. Let's go to App Store. Now, a couple of key things in here, guys. So if you do want to enable automatic updates for your Amazon applications, then you can leave this as on. But in my case, because most of my applications or pretty much all of my applications are sideloaded applications, I'm going to turn this to off because those are updated differently. So this is just for applications you download from the official Amazon App Store, not your third party applications. Let's scroll down and notifications. We don't really care about notifications on the official Amazon App Store. So I'm also going to turn that off. 
Now this is actually quite an interesting one. If you do go through your apps library, let me just quickly show you. And sometimes you may see applications you've installed before, but if you wipe your device or using a different Amazon device, but with the same account, you'll get these cloud icons, which basically means you've installed it somewhere else. Do you want to install it again from the cloud? Now, if you think this looks a bit messy because maybe you don't want to use this application again, you can go back into the settings where we were and you can set this option to on, which means those applications with the cloud icon will not be shown anymore. Let's back out of that. Now, this is one of the key ones because over time, as you install more and more applications, as you're watching different you know, YouTubers recommending apps and you're trying them out, your Fire Stick can get quite bogged down and you end up having lots of applications which maybe you're not using anymore. But each of those applications, especially if they have background notifications, background processing, can really slow down your device. So I highly recommend going into Manage Installed Applications, go through this list and anything you're not using anymore, just to uninstall it. So for example, if I'm not using this anymore, let's click on that and click on uninstall, uninstall again. Okay, let's go down again. So let's say for example, I'm not using this uh, cleaner anymore. Let's click on that, click on uninstall. So once again, not only are you freeing up space, valuable space on your 4K Fire Stick, if any of these applications had background processing, if they had some notifications, all of those will now be removed because you've uninstalled the application. So definitely go through the list guys and just make sure only the applications that you're regularly using are in here. Let's go into preferences. Let's go into privacy settings and just make sure each of these are set to off, especially the top two guys, which is device usage data and collect app usage data. So we don't want anybody collecting anything about what we're doing on our device, what applications we're using, what our device is doing. So really you want to turn these off as quick as possible. Now the last one doesn't mean you're not going to see any more adverts, but you're not going to see personalized adverts. So again, I just leave all three as off. Let's back out of that. Let's go to data monitoring and just make sure that's also set to off. So really we could just say anything that's monitoring your device, anything that's monitoring your applications, anything that's logging data, anything that's running in the background, as much of those things as possible, we wanna try and disable because the more of those things that are off, the more CPU and memory you'll have available on your device. So that's really just like a general rule of thumb you can apply to any device to get the best possible performance. Let's go into featured content. Now on the top of your home screen, you have a large banner, which will actually start playing a video for you automatically. And again, that can slow your device down because if you are on that particular part of the menu, it's gonna start processing or streaming that video, which again, is gonna slow down your UI. So I'd advise turning both these two off. Let's back out. Let's go into my Fire TV, go into about, and under check for updates, make sure your device is running up to date, guys, because they do release updates that have fixes for performance, bug fixes and just other tweaks. So it's always worthwhile just to come in here, check for updates and make sure your device is running the latest version as we can see here. So that's the first thing you can do on your device guys, which is to go through the system settings, tweak them to give you the best possible performance. The more things you have running in the background, the less free memory you're going to have and your device needs that free memory to build up your cache, which helps reduce buffering. Now to close off these background applications, we can use developer tools menu, which is available from the standard Amazon app store. Once you install this application, open it up, then press the back button on your remote. And what we're looking for here is, is the list background apps and process list. When you click on this for the first time, it will actually ask you to install it. So install it, then open it up, and you can now see I have five things running in the background on my device, and all of these are consuming valuable system resources. So before you start your streaming session or your movie session, go into this application, click on close all apps, and scroll down and select the option to four stops. So you're now terminating that process and that will then free up that memory. So definitely close off all background applications before you start your movie session. Next up, I recommend going to my website and downloading a speed test application. Now the benefit of this is you can see exactly what kind of speed you're getting on your device. Now, if you are using a wireless connection for your streaming, then depending on how far your device is from the router or router, and depending on you know how many walls are in place, you know what obstructions are in place. Now, all of these factors can actually cause a blip in your network. And if you do get a blip, then you're likely to get buffering on your device. Now, one way we can mitigate this is to use a wired connection. So on a 4K Fire Stick, you can buy an OTG cable and use an Amazon Ethernet adapter or an adapter like this, which gives you an Ethernet port and multiple USB 3 ports. Now, using a wired connection means you're not going to be affected by interference or distance. Typically, a wired connection will always give you a much better and more consistent connection than wireless. So if you are having any kind of dropouts or any kind of connectivity issues, I do recommend using a wired connection. Now the next fix is probably going to apply to most of you and that's to use a premium service like Real Debrid. 
Now, for the people that don't know, Real Debrid is a premium service and it gives you access to premium file lockers. Now, unlike the free servers, which are typically underpowered, they're oversubscribed, they're being hammered by loads of people trying to access free content, the servers we have Real Debrid are premium servers. So they typically have higher bandwidth and more importantly, they have a lot less users. So if you do find your side deleted applications, your third party APKs, if you find those applications are regularly causing buffering, then I highly recommend trying out Real Debrid and seeing if that fixes all of your buffering issues. And if you do want to check it out, do have a look in the pinned comment. Now, the next tip is all about heat and how the heat on your device, how hot your device gets, can affect the performance. Now, what we can do on the 4K Fire Stick to keep the device running as cool as possible, which will in turn give us better performance, is to regularly put the device to sleep. Now, typically in most households, once they've finished watching, wherever they're watching, they turn the TV off, they leave the Fire Stick as is, but that Fire Stick is still running in the background. And while it's still running, if the screensaver is running or whatever is running in the background, that's all causing the device to stay warm or stay on. And over time, the more hotter it gets, that can greatly affect your performance. So the way we can address that is once you are finished doing whatever you're doing, press and hold the home key on the remote and select the option to sleep. This will then basically put the device to sleep, allowing it to cool down. So the next day or whenever you want to come back and use a device, press any button on the remote, which I'll just show you now. So I want to use a device again. Let me press the home key and the device will then wake up. But the key thing is, whilst you're not using it, the device has a chance to cool down. So that's the next tip, which is basically keeping your device as cool as possible, which will in turn give you better performance. Next up, we have stream quality. Now, if you find in your particular situation that your device, your application or your internet, if one of these three or all of these three just cannot keep up with what you're trying to stream, it may be advisable to actually reduce the stream quality in your application to, let's say, for example, 720p. So if your device is constantly buffering with 1080p content, then I do advise just dropping that down to 720p. Now, 720p can still look good on the big screen, but in terms of bandwidth, it requires less bandwidth than the 1080p content. And because of those lower bandwidth requirements, that should hopefully reduce the chance of your device getting buffering. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching and many thanks for staying till the end. If you did find any of these tips useful, then please do give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe to the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.